just to make sure we have time for everyone to go through their presentations or anything, I'm going to go and get started. Um, welcome to the virtual transfer fair this year. I'm sorry we couldn't do it face to face, but we did want to make sure that you all had time to get in contact with some schools you might be wanting to transfer to or get some information from schools you might need more information from. Um, today we have UTPB, Sam Houston State, West Texas A&M, and Howard Payne University. And we're going to get started with our neighbors down the street, UTPB. Um, and from there, we have Alejandro Castro. So Mr. Castro, if you want to go ahead and take it away, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Bonnie. Um, um, my name is Alejandro Castro or Alex Castro, uh, whatever you prefer to call me. I am the new OC to UTPB transfer specialist. So for any of the students who are really interested in transferring to UTPB, um, I'm going to be uh, that middle person. So I'm going to help you uh, answer any of those questions about uh, what classes might transfer, what classes might not transfer. And of course, if you have any questions about student services, uh, academics at UTPB, I will definitely uh, help with all of those things. So I'm going to share my screen uh, so I can uh, continue with the presentation and just talk to you a little bit about UTPB. OK, perfect. So like I mentioned, uh, my name is Alejandro Castro or Alex. Uh, I am the OC to UTBB transfer specialist. Uh, and uh, something that I did forget to mention, I am actually located in both campuses. Uh, Monday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm located at UTPB. And Tuesdays and Wednesdays, you will find me at the OC campus. Um, at the OC campus for all of those students, I am located in the uh, Salisbury building, uh, right behind the Wrangler Express. Um, I make a joke about it, and I hope it doesn't like continue, but I am literally the guy across from the restrooms in the Wrangler Express. So it's the only office across from me. So if you can't find me, it's literally the only office across the restroom. So um, again, uh, if you have any questions about anything, let me know. So a little bit about UT Permian Basin. Uh, obviously we are located in Odessa, Texas. Uh, we are part of the UT system. Uh, and uh, we are one of the smallest UT schools in the system. Uh, we are, um, we have around 6,000 students. I believe it's around 6,500 students. Uh, with that uh, small class size, uh, it gives you a lot of opportunity for students to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the students. Uh, so you get to know your professors, uh, you get to know your students as well. So your classmates, uh, your classmates could be student athletes and it's not like another, another big school. So I can mention our student to teacher ratio, it's only 23 to one. So you get a lot of interaction with the professors, a lot of one-on-one -on -one. and, uh, I know it might sound cliche, but you're not just a number for us here at UTPB. Uh, we, we get to know you uh, by first and last name. Uh, we are a division two school, uh, so not too big, not too small. So I believe it's the perfect uh, school for everybody uh, that wants to continue their education uh, and complete a bachelor's or a master's degree. We offer about 38 uh, undergraduate majors that I will mention here in a little bit. So anything uh, from uh, biology, chemistry, we have pre-med routes, pre-law routes, uh, mathematics. Uh, what we're really known for here at UTPB, it's obviously our College of Engineering. Uh, we've offered different kinds of engineering degrees, uh, but also our RN to BSN programs. As we know now through the pandemic, we've noticed how important the medical field has turned into, especially nurses, uh, doctors. Uh, so if you're thinking about uh, majoring in any of these majors, let me know. Uh, we can definitely walk you through the process. Uh, we've built a really amazing partnerships with Odessa College and UTPB uh, that we're working on building way more programs on two plus twos, meaning a student can complete two years at Odessa College and all of those classes that they will be taking at OC will transfer to UTPB and you will end up with another two years at UTPB and complete your uh, bachelor's degree. Now, of course, one of the most amazing programs that we created, it's the Teaching in Three. Uh, so anybody that's interesting in the education side, uh, you can actually complete an education and a teaching degree in three years. Uh, it's one of the most amazing partnerships that I've seen from UTPB. Uh, and we would love to continue that partnership with uh, Odessa College as well. And then with, within, uh, because we're a small growing institution, we've added a lot of new buildings to the campus. Uh, within being a growing institution, uh, we've added an engineering building, we added the art center, the Wagner Noel Performing Art Center, and the new C building as well. So a lot of classes happening over there, uh, like I mentioned, a growing institution, 
comes with a lot of growing opportunities for students. So we would love you to be part of it as well. And with that being said, uh, these are some of the statistics that we have for uh, like the NCLEX exam. So students who are taking the nursing NCLEX exam, uh, we have an 82.6 passing rate. Uh, like I mentioned uh, around the engineering, uh, we have a hundred passing rate for the fundamentals of engineering exam for the students. Uh, we wanna see you succeed here at UT Permian Basin. So we wanna make sure uh, that you're taking the right classes. If you have questions, the professors will definitely help you out uh, with any kind of questions that you might have about class, about a test, you know, maybe you don't have um, some kind of um, arrangement to go to class, or maybe you have some questions about something you didn't understand in class. So we definitely help you out with those uh, problems. We'll, we wanna make sure you succeed here. And like I mentioned, we are a division two, two school. We are part of the Lone Star Conference. Uh, we are uh, the Falcons and we compete in different sports. Uh, the one that I'm going to promote a lot, of course, right now, it's our football team. We are undefeated. Uh, I guess we can say we're the self-proclaimed uh, spring champions. As you, a lot of you might know, um, athletics took a hit within, uh, the, within COVID. So we all adjusted to what's going on. Uh, we have a competing uh, sports at UTPB. If The biggest thing I tell you, if you want to be part of something or you want to join a sport, get in contact with the coaches, uh, send them an email. Uh, recruiting starts early, but it's never too late to ask for an opportunity. Uh, but of course, uh, I can't give you a scholarship. I wish I could give you one. Uh, it all has to be through the coaches. So get in touch with the coaches if you want to be part of, you know, men's or women's soccer, uh, basketball, golf, uh, track and field, volleyball, or even part of a football team, you know, we hopefully we can continue this undefeated season throughout the fall semester once we get back to normal, whatever we call normal now. And I know uh, for OC students, uh, you can still live on campus if you wanted to. Uh, so it is open for students. Uh, we do have several residence halls on campus. Um, but like I said, I was I was going to take it off the living on campus or the residence life part. But I thought I would leave it so I can let students know that even though you are living here in Odessa, you can still live on campus and experience that full uh, living on campus uh, student life as well. Uh, part of student life, we do have several uh, opportunities for students. Recently, this past uh, couple of uh, weeks, we had our homecoming. Uh, those were some of the um, student activities that happened on campus. Uh, throughout the semester as well. So we also have other traditions at UTPB, such as club days. So that's where student organizations, fraternities, sororities kind of recruit students or uh, help them uh, join those organizations. We also have midnight breakfast as well. And of course, we have welcome week, which is the first week uh, when students are coming back to campus. That is probably one of the things that I, I love the most. You know, I love uh, working with students, so I love seeing students. So whenever we went into this pandemic, it was so weird not having students on campus. But there's a lot uh, to do at uh, UTPB. Like I mentioned, we are a growing institution. Uh, so the best thing I tell students is like you can be part of this uh, uh, growing part of uh, UTPB. You can create your own tradition. You can create your own student group. Uh, if you want to create, um, let's see, um, a brand new swimming club sport uh, or a fencing club, that's an interesting one because, I mean, who knows about fencing? Not a lot of people do fencing. So if you wanted to create one, uh, I always push students to do so as well. And then, of course, uh, if you are interested in transferring to UTPB, uh, we will make uh, making sure that you did graduate from high school or receive a GED, uh, completed at least 24 or more transferable semester credit hours. Most of the OC students uh, don't struggle with this. Uh, and of course, you need to have at least a 2.0. Uh, we will need from all the colleges, universities that you attended. If you went somewhere else uh, before OC, make sure you send us those transcripts. Or if you took dual credit from another university outside OC, make sure you send us those transcripts as well. And then the application materials, of course, we'll need an admissions applications through applytexas.org. Uh, like I mentioned before, um, all the transcripts from previous colleges and universities that you attended, a $40 application fee or a fee waiver. Uh, you may qualify for a fee waiver. If you, do, if you don't know if you qualify for a fee waiver, uh, contact me or ask me any questions. Uh, I will provide my email here at the end. 
to see if you qualify for a free waiver. Honestly, the easiest way to qualify for one is if whenever you complete your FAFSA, your federal application for free student aid and your EFC, your estimated family contribution equal to zero, we will waive that $40 application fee. And I don't know why, but I put transcripts twice in this little slide. <laughs> and then of course, uh, we do offer some scholarship opportunities for transfer students. Uh, we offer the transfer excellence, uh, which is about 2,500 per academic year, the transfer merit, which is about 2,000, and the transfer grant, which is about $1,000 uh, per year for transfer students. This does not include any financial aid that you will be receiving. If you did apply for FAFSA, uh, you might receive a Texas grant, a Pell grant, um, different kinds of grants that you'll be receiving. And if you have any questions about the current presentation or, or about anything, uh, feel free to contact us at admissions at utpb.edu or my email at castro underscore a at utpb or uh, the official oc to utpb at odessa.edu. If you email any of those, it'll go straight to the same email. So I will respond somehow. So definitely I cannot hide from anybody. You will find me somehow. And that should complete my presentation. So let me stop sharing. Thank you, Alex. There are a couple of questions in the chat box. One student wants to know if UTBB has any physical therapy programs, uh, pre-PT or PTA programs. Okay, so I actually, that's the one I don't know and I had a question for my supervisor because uh, I had that question too for myself. Uh, so I'll get back to the student at the end or I'll respond on the chat, is that okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. And are there any GPA requirements for the transfer scholarships? They are. Um, I will uh, add them to the chat as well. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So before I introdu introduce the, the next presenters, I want to give our OC students the DTS code for your drive to success points. Um, and I'll give that a couple of times throughout the presentation, but it's gonna be 2955. So be sure you go to the app and enter that in so you can get your DTS points and plus you're gonna be entered to win a prize from today's drawing. Um, if you need the link, let me know in the chat and I'll put the link in the chat. Our next presenter is from Sam Houston State. Um, we have Christopher Arcos. I hope I said that correctly. If I didn't, I apologize. Hi, Christopher. And we might be joined by another uh, Christopher, Christopher O'Brien, but if he doesn't make it, we understand. Uh, Christopher, the floor is yours and you should be able to share your screen or do whatever you need to do. And let me know if I can help you with anything. Okay, can you hear me now? <clears throat> Great. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, like Bonnie was saying, my name is Christopher Arcos, and I work at Sam Houston State University as uh, one of our enrollment services coordinators. Um, so essentially, um, enrollment services is kind of like a one-stop shop uh, for transfer students, and so we'll really be able to help out uh, with that um, kind of total experience from admissions um, to financial aid, um, kind of a little bit of like pre-transfer advising stuff. Um, so we're really just a, a great resource for students um, interested in Sam Houston. Um, so with that, I will share my screen. We'll see if it'll go to slideshow. There we go. Okay. Um, so, Sam Houston State, um, as you'll kind of see here, um, we've got some 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 pretty good clout. Uh, we're ranked number one currently uh, for student placement in Texas workforce. Um, so that's awesome. Um, and we're also able to keep a twenty four to one. Um, student to faculty ratio. So that's something that we're really proud of, proud of as well um, with how large uh, the institution has been growing. Um, we have eight colleges uh, at Sam Houston State. Um, and we'll kind of go through those. 
Um, but we have the College of Arts and Media. We, of course, have our College of Business Administration. Criminal Justice um, is one of our more popular uh, colleges. Um, Sam Houston also started as a teaching college uh, back in 1879. It was one of the original uh, normal institutes. And so our College of Education is something that we've been working on um, for over a century now. Uh, we have our College of Health Sciences, which of course includes um, our awesome uh, nursing program. Uh, we have the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. So this is gonna be kind of your philosophies, sociologies, um, political science, things like that. We also have our Science and Engineering Technology College. And lastly, we have our College of Osteopathic Medicine. Um, so this is our newest college uh, for students who are actually wanting to go and um, become doctors. Um, so if you want, if you uh, have your phone, you can easily um, scan this in. And this is going to bring up a full list of all of our degrees at Sam Houston State. So if you have your phone and you like move it over to the camera, it should pick up this QR code and you can follow that link there. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, campus life. Um, I know that y'all are going to be transfer students and transfer students are not to live on campus, um, but if you are interested in um, kind of more of that uh, on-campus life, we do have residence life um, opportunities available for students, and so different housing opportunities, uh, kind of the prototypical dorms, um, but we also have more apartment styles as well. Um, there's several dining facilities on campus um, that you can choose from and different restaurants um, that are awesome. Um, we also have a really cool rec center, uh, complete with climbing wall, and they do a lot of different activities even outside of just that main facility uh, in terms of, you know, taking students on different trips. Um, I know they've gone to like Enchanted Rock, um, a couple of different places within Texas, and then um, when things weren't so crazy out in the world, they did a lot of international trips too that were really cool. Um, one of the biggest things that, you know, we try to uh, in part on the students that are interested in St. Houston is um, we really want those students to get involved um, and a big part of that is uh, student activities and so they're constantly engaging with students um, throughout the year different things um, even for our transfer students if you aren't aware there's actually a national transfer student week um, and so we try to have programming um, during that week especially for our transfer students as well. Um, again, you know, these are some different opportunities um, that are that are here at uh, Sam Houston State. So the biggest or the small picture on the right, um, you'll see it just a huge group of people. Um, that's actually from one of our all pause in events. And so that's where like literally the entire university um, kind of comes together for one big day of uh, service. And so, you know, we go throughout the, the city of Huntsville and even into like the surrounding greater Houston area um, into Conroe and different things to um, just work at different agencies, nonprofits, um, just trying to provide some sort of service um, because uh, at St. Houston, our motto is the measure of a life is its service. And so that's something that we really, really try to impart in our students. Um, as you may or may not know, St. Houston State, uh, I know it's, a, it's a, quite a drive away from Odessa. Uh, when I was looking it up earlier, I think it said it was about eight hours away. Um, so it's a hike, but I promise you it's worth it. Um, and if the drive is too far, we do have a lot of online programs that you might be interested in as well. Um, so definitely don't hesitate to, to look at all of our um, majors and see you know if there is an online that might suit you. Um, since criminal justice is one of our uh, more appealing majors. Um, I do want to let y'all know that uh, if you're interested in a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science, um, you can complete uh, the criminal justice program online. Um, but we're in Huntsville, and so it's kind of a, a small town about an hour north of Houston. Um, so you still have access to kind of um, more of that urban um, atmosphere, if that's something you want. Um, but it, like I said, it's about an hour away. Um, so when you need to hit the books, you know, you can drive to Huntsville and um, study in the library and not be so distracted. 
I will also say that I'm actually located in our Woodlands office. Um, so we're probably about 30 minutes north of Houston, 30 minutes south of Huntsville. So it's kind of like a nice location, um, especially for kind of our online students, adult population, um, and even our transfer students. You know, a lot of students who take the transfer route, um, you know, they have to hold jobs as well. Um, and they typically, you know, work eight to five and are looking for courses that kind of fit around their life. And so this Woodlands campus was kind of designed with that in mind. We really try to um, let students kind of create their own experience here at St. Houston. Um, of course, we have uh, awesome athletic opportunities um, to participate in, um, whether you are an athlete or just an awesome fan. Um, There's several sports, of course, you know, uh, like Alejandro was talking about earlier, football is one of our bigger attractions. Um, but we also have a really great baseball team. Um, they do well uh, nationally um, every year. Um, and our basketball team is working on it. They're trying, y'all. So the admissions process is pretty simple. And this talks a little bit about, I think, the high school. Um, but we're actually going to skip to the transfer. Um, so minimum GPA for students that are coming in, it really just depends on the amount of hours you have. So if you have between 12 and 17 hours, we're looking at at least a 2.5 GPA. If you have over that 17 hour threshold, then a 2.0 GPA um, will, will get you in. Um, so these are kind of our important deadlines and we do have one coming up. So if there's any students that are interested in kind of coming to Sam Houston, maybe in the summer, um, you do have until May 15th to complete that application. If you would like to wait until fall, you've got some time. Um, you have until August 1st. And then if you're interested in coming next spring, you do have until December 1st. But I would just uh, put in one little note there. Um, the sooner you apply, the sooner you're accepted. And the sooner you're accepted, the sooner you can kind of start everything else. Everything else kind of including financial aid. Um, and I know, you know, paying for college is a huge part of that discussion. Um, so I always recommend students, you know, if you have a pretty good idea you're coming, go ahead and apply so that way we can get you started on that financial aid process, getting started applying for scholarships, different things. Um, I always, you know, try to help students be as proactive as possible and applying early is just part of that. Um, this is just kind of an estimate of uh, costs. Again, you know, transfer students are not required to live on campus. And so maybe you'll get to kind of cut out that entire room and board section. Um, and that, of course, you know, that'll cover, you know, some of your meals also. Um, maybe you aren't gonna necessarily have a thousand dollar transportation fee. Um, if you're looking at, you know, strictly online classes. So there's some room and different um, fluctuations within that. This just gives you kind of like a broad idea of essentially what you'd be looking at per semester. And again, um, we do have quite a bit um, of resources available for students in terms of scholarships. And, uh, one of our bigger ones, especially geared towards transfer students, it's called our Bearcat Transfer Scholarship. Um, and the way that works, it's actually based off a of GPA. And so depending on what your GPA might be, there's a corresponding dollar amount that goes with that GPA. And the really cool thing about it is it's renewable. And so the next year you're here at St. Houston um, and it has another um, scale of GPA and uh, dollar amounts, but the next year you're at St. Houston, um, as long as you're in satisfactory academic progress, then um, you could actually receive you know, another scholarship and that'll continue for as long as you're with our institution. But as you'll see here on this slide, we do have some 72% of students receiving um, at least some form of financial aid. So there's quite a bit of opportunities available. Um, we also have campus tours available. Um, we do have a virtual tour that's available online. So you can kind of come through and check out Sam Houston any day of the week you'd like. Um, if you would like to, you know, make the hike uh, to Huntsville, there are also in-person tours available. And I can definitely help you schedule that. Um, but again, you know, there's a QR code here. So if you want to break out your phone and follow that link, uh, that'll take you to help you schedule a tour if you're so inclined. And then again, this is just another uh, QR code. 
Um, if y'all want any more uh, additional information um, about Sam Houston, um, please, please don't hesitate to, to scan this in, fill out the form, and we'll get you any information that you might need to kind of make the best decision for you. Um, but with that, I will kind of end my uh, presentation, and then I'll make sure to get all of my contact information um, to Bonnie to share as well. So thanks all. Thank you so much, Christopher. Sure. One of our instructors was going to join us because he was actually an alumni, but he has he's giving a test today, so he couldn't cut class short. Oh, no. But we had a conference up there in Houston. And he took he like made us drive an hour and a half to Sam Houston State just so he can show us his old stomping grounds. And like all the students were like, hey, we want to go here. So well, that's cool. At least like it wasn't an hour and a half drive for no reason. Oh, it was good to get away from the conference for a little while. It was in between sessions and it was kind of not the greatest conference. So it was OK. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, yeah, um, if there's any additional information I can provide, I'd love to be a resource. Um, for Odessa and your students. Thank you so much. Sure. So we are ahead of schedule, which is fine. Um, I'm just going to give out the DTS code to the students so you guys can get your points and get entered in for today's drawing. Um, <laughs> and that code again is 2955. And I put the link in the code in the chat for you guys to see. Um, and we are going to go ahead and move on to our next presenters, which is West Texas A&M, and we have Miss Candace Copeland. Hey, Hi, everyone. Candace. How are you? Good. How are y'all? Doing good. Are you, okay. you should be able um, to share the screen and everything. If you need anything, just let me know. Perfect. Okay, so just to let all of you know, um, I'm coming at this more from an advisor's standpoint instead of admissions. So um, the past two uh, presenters have done a really good job of showing you cool slideshows and, <laughs> and uh, all the reasons why you should come here. Um, I am going to be showing you a little bit more of our website and the resources that you can use as a transfer student. Um, and then I'm going to give you at the end um, the information for our one of our recruiters, Eric Cortez, who is one of our transfer um, recruiters, and he can also um, give you, you know, send you his presentation that he uses. But whenever I talk, I, I'm a transfer, I'm the transfer coordinator for um, WT. And so whenever I speak with transfer students, these are kind of the main tools I use. So I'm going to take you to our website now. Okay. So can everyone see that? Awesome. Okay. So this is our website, wtamu.edu literally the first button on our website is apply. Um, so that's the nice thing. That's what I like to tell students. Um, if you click on it, it takes you to our um, our admissions web page. Um, and then you just go ahead and you just register as a new user. And there's transfer information here if you do ever need it. Um, to be a, considered a transfer student, you do have to have 12 hours to transfer in. So if you are under that, you're still considered a freshman. Um, the nice thing is we don't have to do the Apply Texas app anymore. That one is expensive. But as of now, um, our transfer application, if you go in and do register, um, it, it makes you create your own little portal. And that, that will prompt you um, to turn in everything that applies to you. So it is specific to you now. Um, so if you're under 22, of course, you'll need the meningitis vaccination. Um, if you um, are going to live on campus, it'll prompt things like that, and it'll prompt you to turn in your transcript. So that's kind of the um, gist of that. Um, as far as tours go, um, if you just go to this same page, hit that apply button, you can actually do visits, um, and it could be a campus tour. We actually have a virtual tour now, which is really cool and which was really beneficial um, during this year of COVID times <laughs> that everybody keeps um, lovingly calling it, um, that you could you know, come to campus, especially since you guys do live about four hours away from us, close enough you know, for mom and dad to come on the weekend, but too far away for them to just drop in on you. Um, so uh, we do have this tool now as well. And then we also have um, football games that we do, um, if you click on this little visit right here, and uh, we do have 
football games. Uh, we call those game days that you can come to and they actually have you guys sit on the football field. It's pretty cool in our new stadium. It's awesome. Um, and then we have Discover WT, which is kind of another full day of tours and getting to meet with your college. Um, every campus tour that they set up, they do give you the option to meet with a, an advisor in your college or a professor in your college so that you can ask them more specific information. Um, dead, as far as application deadlines, I, a couple of um, the other speakers did mention it's not really about the deadline, it's about how early can you get things done. That's a big um, difference when going to a university. It's a, a lot of times the deadline, the deadline may be four days into class to get registered, but we prefer that you do it a long time before that because classes do start filling up. I mean, we're about to open up registration next week um, and there will be some classes that fill up that week. So um, again, how early can you get things done? Um, okay. So next, I'm going to move on to another tool that I do use with um, students all the time. If you'll go to academics on our website and then click on advising, you can look at the degree checklist. And so degree checklists are going to go over each degree. So I like to search by college, but it's probably easier to search by um, alphabetically if you don't know exactly what college your major is in. So let's just say you are accounting. If you click on checklist and curriculum guide, it will pull up the checklist with all the requirements for that degree. So you can go in and pick out and kind of mess around and see where each of those classes that you're taking right now at your community college fit in. So your sciences should be labeled .30, they'll go in here, okay? Um, if you, your political sciences, histories, all those classes that you're um, community college advisors are doing a good job advising you into, um, you can see where they fit in. So accounting, you can come in and check them off. And then you can calculate, um, depending on how many you checked off, because each has 120, you can calculate and see how much you'll have left by the time you get to us. Um, so that's a really nice thing that a lot of transfer students like to go over. Um, there are a few, the, on the degrees that we have at WT and any university you go to, um, there are going to be some specific requirements per uh, major. So, for example, um, the call in all of our business degrees, core 80, which is your social and behavioral um, science core, is going to require economics 2301. So if you've taken psychology, it, it won't count there. So I do want you guys to know why it's kind of important to pick majors a little bit early. Um, you don't have to pick it your first or second semester, but no matter what university you go to, by that third semester, you should probably be giving an idea so you make sure that you get your degree-specific core in. So, um, I, and I love that other people are shaking their heads yes, because I hate to see transfers get to a, the university that they want to go to and find out that they're losing credit. And um, it doesn't uh, happen, you know, every day, but to those students it does happen to, um, it just makes me sad that, that you feel like you wasted your time and resources. So I would tell you no matter where you're wanting to go, go and do that research and see you know, the degree that you're wanting to pursue wherever that you were taking classes that line up with that degree. Um, so again, economics is specific for business. Let's just say you were an engineering major and um, you were wanting to do, let's just say it's chemical engineering or civil engineering. We'll just look at that one. They also have course specific requirements. Those are going to be calculus for your math. So of course you'll have to take college algebra and trig to be able to take calculus, um, but calculus, is, those two other two math classes aren't gonna count towards the degree. Um, and that's going to be, again, across the board at universities for, for engineering. Um, for your sciences, you would need chemistry. So just the point of this discussion is to make sure you're taking the right courses for where you're wanting to go. If you decide to go to these other two wonderful universities, um, just do your research there too, okay? Um, because it's important and um, it's your money and your time and your resources. So we want to make sure that you're doing what's right for you. 
Okay, so all of these are listed here. You can go in and look at all the degrees that we have. Um, and you can, you know, just see um, what requirements and what even might be better. So if you end up having a lot of credits from a community college um, and you're like, I just want the degree that matches, we can, you know, go in and look and see which one have, which degrees have more electives. Like we do have um, health sciences, psychology, sociology, all of those have quite a bit of electives that we can make work. Um, Next, I would like to point out our online programs because we do have a few online degrees and they were, they're pretty popular for students in y'all's area. Um, so if you go here, we can look at the undergraduate degrees. So we do have um, several applied arts and sciences. So I don't know if any of you are going to be um, in programs like dental hygiene, um, nursing, just technical programs like welding. Um, we do have several degrees that can make those count. They're called applied arts and sciences degrees and several of those options can be done online. So I just wanna give you guys a heads up on that as well. Um, we have communication, computer information system, um, which is a lot of app development um, and computers and IT. Um, we have criminal justice administration online. We have economics and the BS version of economics which again, this one can absorb a lot more electives. So that's a good option for some students. We kind of make that work for you. Finance, general business, general studies, health sciences is a really popular one. Management, marketing. And if you're already an RN, we can do the last 30 hours of the degree. So RN to BSN, that one can be completely done online as well. And that one is really cool. And it's designed um, for people that we know are already working as RNs. So it, it can be done in a year, and that way you bump up to that um, BSN pay. So that one's really nice for our students um, who are already RN. And then finally, I wanted to show you guys um, the transfer equivalencies. So if you just go back to the main page, and you scroll about halfway down, you're gonna see student links, and it's gonna say transfer equivalencies. So if you click on that, you can select your community college or some of you, um, you know, some of us transfer around several times. Uh, so if you have a transfer credit, you know, let's just say from AC or, you know, University of Texas, things like that, um, you can um, go on here and find that. So Odessa Community College, you just, of course, it's alphabetical, scroll down to the O's. Um, it's Odessa College, is that's the official title? Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, if you click on that and click submit, you can actually type in the classes there and it'll pull up how they'll transfer to WT. So um, let's just say English 1301, um, math, and then 1314. These are all going to be pretty basic courses. Communication, or do y'all have speech? Is it speech or communication? We have speech. Speech, okay. Like that? Yes. Okay. Um, and so if you hit the submit button, it's going to pull up what y'all's courses come in as. So uh, the transfer course, if you have English 1301 at Odessa College, it's going to come in as English 1301 at WT. Um, if you took the advanced comp and rhetoric, it's going to come in as English 1000. So um, that being said, if it doesn't come in as a direct equivalent at um, WT, and I would say that this is probably universal too, I hope that I'm teaching you like college advising lessons instead of um, that you can use at any of these places, um, but I, a lot of times these can be subbed. So like Core 40 is a one that is pretty easy to sub, that is um, language, philosophy, and culture. So a lot of times if you have another English that's got some type of literature in it, we can make it work for your core 40. So that's the nice thing. Um, down, let's just go down here to speech. So if you took, let's just say speech um, 1315, it's gonna come in as our COM 1315 and it'll account for that core 11 slot just like it did at Odessa College. Um, but let's just say you got a wild hair and decided you wanted to take voice dic and diction, um, then it's gonna come in as a COM 1000 and depending on the degree, it may work and it may not. So that is why I like to show students this tool 
so that if you decide do decide to come to WT, you can see exactly how your courses, courses are going to count. And I would say that this is becoming more and more popular at other universities as well. So I would say definitely ask your transfer advisors anywhere you decide to go to see if this is an option so you can see where courses are gonna count. If all else fails, and a course that you can't find the course on here because that is sometimes the case, you can email um, either you know, me or a, another um, transfer liaison, really, um, in admissions or me, and we can try to get your course description and see where the course will count. Um, so at this uh, point, that's really kind of all I had for you. I'm gonna pull up my information so that you are able to email me if you do have questions. Um, and then Eric Cortez, he is at one of our transfer admissions counselors. So if you do decide that you'd like to come to WT and um, you have questions about the application or visiting or any of those things, um, that you can contact him as well. So at this point, are there any questions? I know mine wasn't a typical presentation. I, um, <laughs> if you guys ever want one, Eric is really good uh, at giving these presentations. I just thought, you know, coming from an advising standpoint, there were just different tools. No, this was great information. This was fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm looking in the chat just to make sure I haven't missed anything, but I don't see any questions coming up. But okay, if cool. students. They've been really shy on, on, on Zoom for some reason, which to me, I think they would be shyer or less shy on Zoom. But if they send me any questions, I'll be sure to send them your way. So thank okay. you. Yeah, I, um, I did a transfer and even like even the adults are shy whenever I did. Well, they're all all of our students are adults, but um, even like the people that work our, our community college partners when we do this, they are they send me a ton of emails after so it's just kind of funny <laughs> thank you candace for being here yeah so we are still running ahead of schedule which is okay um i do want to give the students the dts code one more time um and the link is in the chat for you to, to enter in your code and it's 2955 so that code is going to expire at 2 30 i believe um, so make sure you get your, your drive to success points and get entered into win today's drawing. Um, and now I want to go ahead and introduce our next speaker who is from Howard Payne University, um, Mr. David Williams. Hi, David. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is. I apologize. I, run, I ran into the Zoom a little late. I had a student walk in and had to take them to the business office. And you all know how the college life goes. So uh, all the college admissions counselors are nodding going, we've all been there. Uh, I do have my screens all oriented and um, I don't know what everybody else has done, but I do have a PowerPoint presentation. I can share the screen and uh, it takes five, six minutes to go through that and then certainly open up for questions. Uh, as I'm getting that set up, again, my name is David Williams and I am the transfer admissions counselor here at Howard Payne. And um, everybody see my screen, I hope. All right, we're good. Um, and I have been associated with Power Pain for going on 30 years. I came here as a freshman. So I love Power Pain. I love what we're about. And um, hopefully you will discover a little bit more about Howard Payne University um, through my PowerPoint. Um, but if you are a transfer student interested in coming to Howard Payne, I'm the guy, I'm the one you'll deal with and we'll take care of you the best we can. Uh, and so without further ado, if I can figure out how to click through this, I think I can use my arrows. No, that will not work. There we go, I've got it going on. Um, obviously, <laughs> um, we are a private uh, Christian university located right in the heart of Texas. We've been here since 1885 or 1889, and we are a Christ-centered, close-knit academic community. 
um, give you an example of that and what that means is we, we do have things like chapel to give students a chance to worship and hear from a speaker, um, more or less a sermon, but it just depends on the week and what is happening. Sometimes we have academic awards and things during that time, but we do try to focus uh, all of our attention upon Christ and all that we do uh, in the classroom, outside of the classroom and everything we do. Uh, we believe that when we uh, focus our lives around Christ here at Howard Payne, that it's a win for everybody. It's a win for the student, and they grow in their relationship with the Lord, and um, they grow closer to Him, and then the classroom as well. Many times you'll open up the classroom class time with prayer, not every week, not every, every class, but um, they'll open up with prayer. But uh, being a close-knit community like this, um, I have a personal uh, recent experience uh, with this situation. Uh, one of my daughter-in-law, her sister attends here and they lost their father uh, a week and a half or so ago. And they had the funeral. Well, along with that, they had some time where she had to be gone from class for uh, a few weeks. And being that we're a smaller university, uh, the professors were able to stay in touch with her, get her the work she needed, and she was able to just stay on track. Um, and they were very understanding of her situation uh, without just losing the whole semester uh, because of that tragedy in their life. And so uh, that's part of being at a smaller university. You have the privilege to be able to do that because you know, you know, the professors know their students. So we're a close knit uh, uh, community as well. You know, we're here to give a great education and we believe Howard Payne offers uh, a great education, uh, well-rounded in a liberal arts school. So uh, we're going to give you a great bachelor's degree. We do have several uh, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science. We have a Bachelor of Business Administration. We also have a great nursing program up and running who is uh, state accredited and uh, about to be nationally accredited. Uh, in our BSN program, a Bachelor of Science in Nursing uh, degree. It is a four-year program. And so great academic community, and we have people serving literally all over the world, right out of Howard Payne University, uh, in every job imaginable. Uh, we have great success with our academic uh, academics here at Howard Payne. We also, one other thing along the lines, we have a, a, an accelerated program called the D Douglas MacArthur Academy of Freedom. And that is an accelerated program. The students will be sitting in the same classroom as other uh, non-academic or non-academy students. We call it the Academy of Freedom. And um, in the academy, they will then be added uh, a work in the, in the same class. They'll have additional work. It does come with a great scholarship opportunity. We give five full tuition scholarships a year out of that program. Plus, um, they have an opportunity uh, if they do not get the, five, the one of the five full tuition scholarships, there is a little bit of a lesser scholarship that's still better than our presidential scholarship, and um, it is for the academy and for students who are not quite up to the presidential standards. And by that, I mean grades, your 3.8 GPA or higher. If you're not quite at a 3.8, uh, you can still qualify for the academy and get a, a like a $9,600 a semester scholarship instead of 8000 um, and that will be uh, for the Academy of Freedom. So that's on the academic side. It is a major in public policy and servant leadership is what the academy is. Uh, so you're going to get to do things like moot court, mock trial, model UN. Um, you don't have to be in politics. You don't have to be like a history major to be in that area. Uh, my daughter-in-law went through that program. She was an academy major and a social work major. So uh, we have students that combine those majors with um, uh, several different fields and um, are involved all across the board from Christian studies to uh, teachers or whatever it is. Uh, the nursing program and the music program are a little bit more difficult to work out just because of the time crunch. Uh, and they, they, those two programs fill up your schedule so much that uh, the academy is hard to accommodate with that. Because basically they're taking elective classes that you would take and they're giving you academy classes instead. So if you have more questions about that, you'll have all my contact information by the end of our discussion and you can reach out to me about the academy. So our admission requirements here at Howard Payne for transfer students specifically, um, all we ask is that you have a GPA of a 2.0 or higher, and um, you have 12 or more college credit hours. Now, if you meet the minimum requirements with those requirements, I may ask for more information just to get some better academic uh, background on you as a student, uh, but at least 12 credit, college credit hours with a 2.0 or higher, that will uh, call, qualify you for the scholarships we will talk to you about in a little bit. Now, if you have uh, Phi Theta Kappa, uh, we are a school that offers a automatic presidential scholarship if you are in PTK. 
here at Howard Payne. So all you have to do is present that certificate to me at admission time, and we will get you an automatic presidential scholarship. The scholarships are as such, the Yellow Jacket Scholarship, and these are tuition-based scholarships, so they, they will take come off of your tuition by 7000 per semester if you meet that 2.0 or higher with 12 college credit hours. If your GPA is a little bit better at a 3.4 or higher, you will get the Dean's Level Scholarship, and then the Presidential Scholarship is a 3.8 GPA or higher, or you are in a Phi Theta Kappa. Now, we do have some other scholarships that um, will allow you to have the lesser requirement of a 2.0, but get you the 7,500, the dean's level. Those are our legacy students whose parents or grandparents have graduated here, as long as they indicate that and uh, let us know when they graduated Howard Payne. Um, also, if you are within a, if you draw a bullseye around Brownwood, Texas, and an outer bull's eye around Brownwood, Texas and the counties that touch those counties. So if you're a local student, we can get you the better scholarship. We call it our Heart of Texas and our Central Texas Scholarship. It's the same scholarship as the Dean's level. It just requires a 2.0 GPA and we'll get you the 7,500. Um, and those are, uh, in addition to that, we have some a few other things, but that's, that's the basic scholarships on that. We do offer sibling grants and, and things like that. And then, of course, that presidential scholarship of 8000 per semester. And again, those come off of your tuition and you will uh, all you have to do is present your grades and you um, will receive that scholarship each semester you're enroll and re enrollable. Uh, you won't lose the presidential if your GPA drops below a 3.8. You will retain that as long as you can re enroll each semester. Uh, moving on to our HPU price promise, Dr. Corey Hines is our president. He implemented this uh, this last year. This is our HPU price promise, and that simply states that once you uh, enroll in Howard Payne, when you come in at your tuition level, that tuition level will never go up while you're a student here. It will stay the same. So that's our HPU price promise to you as a student. You will come in kind of under that catalog. You'll stay right there. Uh, we are an NCAA Division, th NCAA Division III sports school, and we all, uh, which means we have si we do have six ladies sports and six men's sports available, and a huge portion of our better than fifty percent of our uh, population here at Howard Payne are involved in uh, collegiate sports. So we're very proud of that, and we've got a, a great um, a programs going on. Um, let's see if I can put me on the spot and, uh, and list all these. But for the guys, we do have football, basketball, tennis, golf, soccer, and baseball. That's six sports for the ladies. Basketball, volleyball, golf, tennis, soccer, and softball are, are the sports that we offer for our students. Uh, we also have 25-plus student organizations with uh, Greek life as well. Uh, and those student organizations are all across the board. You just, uh, the, in the students, if they don't have one that um, we offer, they are welcome to uh, go through the process to create a student organization. So great opportunity to get involved in Howard Payne and get involved in the social life, life here. And then for, um, well, you really don't care about dual credit classes. Uh, these are for high school students. Uh, and then there's our uh, application a QR code if you want to scan that or take a quick shot of that. Um, that is available to our students and take you straight to the uh, application uh, for Howard Payne. And the application fee is free here at Howard Payne. Just uh, jump online, create a student account, and then go to the application and submit that for us. If you are interested in coming in fall 2021, um, but think you might want to take summer classes, go ahead and submit an application for the fall, and then we can create you an opportunity for the summer. It, it works out better that way all the way around in our computer system. And as y'all well know, we don't need any more glitches in our computer system. Uh, they can create challenges for us. Uh, and then lastly, my contact information is there if you have any questions. If you'll notice, I have two email addresses on there. If you wanna email me an unofficial transcript, I can take them at the top one there, my D. Williams uh, email address. If you want to send an official email, uh, an official electronic uh, uh, transcript, use that bottom one. The lady that uh, that signs off on all of those, she, she saves the transcript and the document that comes with it, such as the parchment document or whatever. So go ahead and email that to the enroll email address if you can, if you want to send an, uh, a um, transcript to us 
uh, here at Howard Payne. Now, uh, keep in mind, we can admit based on unofficial transcripts, but we will need official transcripts certainly to get you all the credit for your classes. The financial aid will uh, also not award until they have official transcripts on file. So a whirlwind of a PowerPoint with lots of great information about Howard Payne. And uh, I'll see if I can get back to the front of that, put our nice logo up there and stop sharing our screen. There we go, and we're back. Any questions about Howard Payne? Apologize, I wore the, the wrong shirt today. I think it looks like it's 3D. It's kind of going all over the place. So <laughs> try to stick with solids next time. Nope, you're great. And I love hearing about Phi Theta Kappa scholarships. Yes. That's always my favorite thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't see any questions in the chat. Let me double check one more time. Um, not seeing it. So my mind just went completely blank. I'm so sorry. Uh, David, thank you so much for being here. Um, and even though you were late, we're, we always have those students that come in. So I think all of us know what that's like. So no, no worries there whatsoever. Um, just thank you for coming and sharing the information about Howard Payne. Does anyone have any questions for any of the universities that were here? Um, presenters, do you have anything you want to add or do you want to share any of your contact information with me so I can share that with the students? We can do that. Um, anyone else has questions? Okay. Thank you all for being here today. I really appreciate it. I know these are crazy times, so hopefully next year we can have the transfer fair face-to-face. -face. Those are always a little easier for me. Uh, I'm not a fan of Zoom, and Becky, I still talk with the mute button on all the time. I'm never going to get used to that. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. Um, if you ever have any questions, you can come and see me. I'm going to put my email in the chat, um, and you can talk to any of the advisors here at OC, and we can help you get in contact with um, any other university that you're wanting to transfer to. So thank you all for being here today. Thanks, guys.